ever wanted to stream and or record something from your PlayStation 3 console and or from the PlayStation TV, but for whatever reason, when you boot up the console and have everything all connected, even with the capture card, the capture card picks up something. But both your monitors are showing both black screens. Well, ladies and gentlemen, HDCP, also known as High Bandwidth Digital Content Protection, is the main problem that we're dealing with. In today's video, I will show you a very easy way to set this up on streaming your PlayStation 3 games and or PlayStation Vita games off the TV. I will be showing both demos. Hello everyone, my name is Frosty RMB, Nintendo Let's Player, Twitch streamer, and a guy who just posts random videos on YouTube. I need to make a very quick disclaimer here. Please do not use this method to bypass Netflix, Hulu, and any other streaming services because that's against the law. This video is only meant for education purposes on streaming video games for live content. Thank you for listening. Alrighty, so the equipment that you'll be needing is of course, whichever respective console you plan on doing recording and or streaming from. Two monitors, one will serve as a gaming monitor. The other is gonna be for a computer situation. So you'll also need a hard drive. Also we'll need a streaming and or recording software. For this demo, I will be showing off the OBS situation. Of course, you'll need a capture card HDMI splitter with uh, two outlets and one inlet with a power plug inside. Not HDMI switch because the switch only has one output, so don't get confused, please. And then, of course, three HDMI cables. Now, the reason why I say three HDMI cables is because we will be using all three slots for the splitter. And the splitter, I will be posting exactly how much I got for it. Your sales tax will vary in your location and or region providence. So I'm going to put that somewhere in the video so you guys won't get lost. But believe me, this is the one that I've seen the most reliable reviews on due to the fact that it's a very short term. Just be warned, HDMI splitters tend to fizzle out or break really short periods of time. I don't remember what the reviews say about this one. I think it's like two years or something. I'm not sure, take that for candy sugar. And do note that the newer versions don't come with a quote unquote dedicated plug, but I found out using a any kind of power brick, honestly, like this one, the iPhone one, turns out to be pretty, pretty good. So it gets the everyday needs done. Optional tip, if you have trouble with cable management or you're just not organized, I would highly recommend getting sticky notes or mask tape. Mask tape would probably be much preferred. Roll it up to each of the three HDMI cables separately, get a marker or pen, write on the sticky note or masking tape number one, two, and three. I'm gonna be referring each of the HDMI cables by their numbers. So the HDMI one will be PS3 and PlayStation TV. Cable two will be the display monitor on the gaming monitor. HDMI three, HD capture card. Step number one, go ahead and plug in your power outlet that you will be using the USB power jack and plug it into the circular looking audio jack cable. This will boot up the HDMI splitter and we'll restart receiving power as soon as we plug in the rest of the stuff. Step number two, go ahead and plug in HDMI number one and plug it into the HDMI input of the HDMI splitter. From there, you'll see a red power indicator that it is communicating. Step number three, go ahead and plug in HDMI 2 that's connected to the monitor and plug it into 
one of these two outlet ports. I don't know if it really matters, but my personal preference, I always plug the monitor cable to the output. But take that cane sugar because that's only from my experience. Ready? That's all been plugged. And that's also lighting up a red indicator. If you've done it right, your game monitor should be showing the game itself. But OBS or your streaming and recording program has not picked up yet. Step number four. Go ahead and plug in the third HDMI cable to the ca capture card and the remaining slot of the HDMI splitter. From here on out, you should have both red light indicators on the outlet put. If you executed these steps correctly, you should be able to see footage on your recording slash streaming software and also on the gameplay monitor. It is worth noting that People have reported where they received footage of video only, but no audio. And there was other reports where there was audio only, but no video. Personally, I've only stumbled upon problems with no audio, but I have received video only. To make sure that we've done these processes correctly, go ahead and start up the game. And it is worth noting that this is pretty normal when you start up and boot up the game because the Elgato has to go through communications once more. But right now we need to check for sound since video was already cleared already. Notice how we have sound now. That just means that we've done the processes correctly. So let's go ahead and show off exactly how to detect the problem of the missing audio. To fix the audio footage being missing problem, be sure the PS3 console is shut off completely. Go ahead and boot it up, but be sure to hold the button for a couple seconds until you hear a beeping sound like that. And the PS3 will bring up an interesting menu. So as soon as it boots up, we'll be giving a couple options. So right here an available hdmi device was detected do you want to put output video and audio using hdmi boot up the controller and press yes this is a very common way to actually fix this and it'll give you another menu so go ahead and confirm that and that should fix the problem for most cases now for the playstation tv it's pretty much the exact same steps except for the HDMI number one. Go ahead and unplug it from the PlayStation 3 and plug it into the PlayStation TV instead. Boot it up. This thing is so helpful. I love this thing. And the capture card will pick up something. So that way, right there, we also have to do some several checks as well. PlayStation TV is loading up. And voila, I've been exposed with my PSTV menu. But definitely not necessary. You guys don't need to know about that. Go ahead and boot up a game. But for whatever reason, this one doesn't need to like reboot itself onto the menu like the PS3 does. So that's pretty interesting. You notice how the audio is picking up. We did it, ladies and gentlemen. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comment sections. I'll try to answer them as best as I can, but this is a pretty, pretty basic process. So this has been Frosty r &B. All I gotta say is, annihilate the subscribe button, explode the like button, stay chilly, keep gaming. We'll see you guys in the next one. God damn, I really wanna kick that bear.